AMD appears to be struggling with their largest laptop launch. Apple wants you to save money with them and Nvidia wants you to do literally the opposite. And it's, I, I'm a little fed up at this point. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, April 18th, 2023. And we're gonna start off today talking about the hotly anticipated AMD Phoenix APUs, which are supposed to be the Zen 4 plus RDNA 3 graphics units that are supposed to be really good laptop powerhouses. And these were initially supposed to launch sometime in March. And you'll notice if you look at the calendar, or listen back to what I just said, it is the middle of April and these have not appeared anywhere. And that is because AMD had to move the launch from March until April. But now we're getting further details that that launch looks to be a little bit further pushed out. This is according to a reviewer over on the Chinese website, Billy Billy, who's saying that these chips are being delayed until the 30th of April and that the U series chips are gonna be delayed until the 1st of May which is a little weird considering the 30th of April is a Sunday. AMD typically doesn't launch things then, so it could potentially be that it's not hitting retailer stores until sometime in May. However, this is a pretty significant delay considering that the Intel 13th gen Raptor Lake laptops and these AMD Phoenix laptops got announced at the same time back in January at CES, and we have nothing to see from AMD, whereas the Raptor Lake laptops have been on sale for the past two months. Golden Pig proving that they do indeed have a Phoenix laptop with the 7000 series badging. As you can see right here, it's got the new orange badge that we talked about in a previous episode of Hot News, which is there to help to make sure you know that you're getting the Zen 4 upgrade instead of just the regular one. AMD seems to be having a hard time with it, whether that's due to stock issues or according to them, it was to align with OEM launches. It remains to be seen how that's going to work out, especially if there are delays and then these laptops are not broadly available towards the beginning part of May. It could be for several different reasons that make it so that AMD continues to announce a lot on the mobile side, but then not really deliver it. They've done that for the past few generations. Ryzen 6000 and Ryzen 5000 in the laptop sector were hotly anticipated, but they came out in such slow drips and drabs that it was hard to actually get excited for it because you had to wait so long to even get one after Intel and Nvidia had already launched the new generation of stuff for months. Let me know if this puts you off from buying a Phoenix. Could you wait another? I mean, at this point, it's just another few weeks, but it does appear to be that this is a little bit further from what AMD communicated back when they announced these at CES. Let me know all about that down below. But in case you are looking to get a brand new Phoenix laptop and are looking for a little bit extra cash to help move that along, you can check out today's video sponsor, Jawa, because they're the marketplace for gamers by gamers to help you buy and sell your old PC parts, or potentially even pick up something new to you. They've got verified sellers offering complete PC builds. They've got classifieds with just PC parts, whether it's CPU, motherboard, graphics card, or you can even check them out to sell your old GPU directly to them. They'll offer you a price for your graphics card, whether it be a GTX 1080 Ti or something even newer, Jawa will give you an offer. You can trade it into them without having to worry about the classified side of things. And then you can move forward with that cash to potentially upgrade to a brand new laptop or a 4060 Ti, which we'll talk about the hilariousness of that in a little bit towards the end of hot news. But Jawa has a great community behind them, over 8,000 active members over on their Discord. They provide a valuable service to anybody who's tech oriented here in the United States, making sure that you have a marketplace catered specifically to buying and selling PC parts and all the things that a gamer might need. So check out Jawa and their GPU buyer at the link in the video description. Check out their classifieds in case you wanna sell something that's not a GPU. And big thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. But in case you wanna get a Steam Deck with that little bit extra Jawa money that you just acquired, Valve is announcing that Proton 8 is going to be their biggest release to date. In case you're not familiar, Proton is the compatibility layer between Linux and the games actually playing. It allows for Windows games to be played on Linux and it's a massive overhaul with Valve announcing that you're gonna need a GPU that supports Vulkan 1.3, but it allows for a ton more games to be played, including newer launches like Forspoken or Dead Space, which have not been fully playable on the Steam Deck. This will give a new set of games to be playable and change a few things under the hood. They said that the experimental version of Proton 8 should be coming out in the next few weeks in case you wanna try that out. Now, I want you to try out the deals that we have from UFD Deals. Reese bring you the hottest ones.
Thanks, Reese. I've also got a great deal for everybody in case that you're looking to save a little bit of money. Apple might be the best place to do that because they announced the Apple Card Savings Account. In case you have an Apple Card, it got announced back in October, but now it's officially launching with a 4.15% APY interest rate, which Apple is claiming is about 10 times the national average. And there are no fees, no minimum deposits, and no minimum balance requirements. One of the things that's not quite clear is whether or not it has that weird old FDIC rule where you can only withdraw from your savings account six times, which is a holdover on legacy bank accounts, which they put there in order to cause more fees and get more money out of you. It's not quite clear whether or not Apple's going to do that. The banking account that this is based off of, which is the Goldman Sachs one, doesn't actually have this limitation. So it's likely not that the Apple savings account will have that, but that 4.15% APY is actually huge. There are a few better savings accounts out there that you can check out, especially if you're banking with a local credit union here in the United States. But I decided for craps and giggles to go ahead and look over on Bank of America to see what their savings account was. And it's, this is atrocious. It's 0.04% for the platinum tier. I didn't realize that they would be so horrendous. Kyler, how much is your savings account percentage? Uh-huh. You, do you have a savings account? <laughs> <laughs> All I know is this reminds me of the good old days of having an ING direct account that had a crazy savings rate on it. It looks like Apple's bringing about the same thing. It'll be connected with the Apple card. It seems to be like a good thing for consumers and to wrap you into the Apple ecosystem even more. That's, I think the purpose of this is to keep you in their walled garden. Let me know, does that high percentage savings rate entice you? Let me know down below in the comments. But in case you're looking to save money on an electric vehicle, as of today, some of those tax credits are expiring, especially because today is tax day here in the United States. Kyler, can I get a what what for the IRS? What? That was good. The Inflation Reduction Act is changing a few things with regards to EV tax credits, and it's only going to apply to specific ones at this point to get the full $7,500. You can see them listed on the screen right here. There's $3,750 that comes in from 50% being made or assembled within the United States, and then another $3,750 coming out from 40% of critical materials coming from the US or free trade partners. So you can either get half or you can get both, depending on what vehicle is made in which way. And you can see there's a few Teslas, a couple Ford vehicles, and all of GM vehicles qualified besides the Hummer. But in case $7,500 sounds like a lot of money to you, I got something else that's gonna sound like a lot of money. We've got some details coming out about the Pixel Fold, which I thought was gonna be my first foldable device until I found out about these details. It's gonna get announced on May 10th, according to John Prosser from Front Page Tech. You're gonna be able to pre-order it that same day and get it from partners and carriers on May 30th. But the details are it's gonna cost $1,800. Even if I fold my money in half and assume that that doubles it, I, st I still will not be reasonable reasonable to pick one of these up. The Pixel 7a is supposed to come in at the $499 price point with reports that the 6a is not going to be discontinued, probably going to get a price drop to keep pace with the 7a. Let me know if either of these intrigues you. At that $1,800 price point, I'm a little turned off from Google, which is what appears to be happening when it comes to search engines being on Android phones. For the first time in a long time, it looks like Google now has to worry about Microsoft and Bing, with Samsung being reported that they're in conversation to get rid of Google as the default search search engine on Samsung devices. And reportedly, this has put Google into shock and panic, especially since Bing has had a resurgence or a first surgence. I don't know that Bing was ever popular before this. Thanks to ChatGPT and all of the AI techniques that they're gonna be putting into it. Google does pay a lot of money to keep their search engine as the primary one on mobile devices, reportedly up to $20 billion per year to be on iOS, which is absolutely a high number. But it's also potentially being reported that this might be a negotiation from Samsung because they don't wanna pay as much it could be about $3.5 billion per year that Samsung's paying. And so it just might be that they're saying, hey, there's competition. Could you give us a lower rate? Google might acquiesce to that. Google might also call their bluff saying, yeah, go ahead and go with Bing. Allegedly, I'm finding out for the first time that the Galaxy S2 shipped with Bing back in 2010. That's wild. But this is also coming amidst report that Google is working on a brand new AI-based search engine that's gonna replace what they currently have. There's no clear timetable on this, but it's gonna be called Magi. And it's gonna have all the things that you've expect from a chat GPT chat bot to give you all of the answers that you're looking for in a search engine and that they might even show it off at Google IO in the next few months. But when Google was asked about this by Engadget, they say we've been bringing AI to Google search for years to not only dramatically improve the quality of our results, but also to introduce entirely new ways to search such as lens and multi search, which is not technically incorrect. Again, these are just rumors that Google is trying to catch up with what's going on with Bing and chat GPT. They might need to overhaul a few things or at 
least make it a little bit more forward facing that they are using AI. Let me know if you've switched over from Google to Bing thanks to ChatGPT or do you still primarily use Google and then reference ChatGPT and Bing for very specific things. I'm curious to hear about your usage of search engines down below in the comments. And if you're searching for the fastest processor, the biggest, baddest boy ever made, the Geno X96 core might be popping up because there's now Chinese sellers who have these 1.1 gigabyte of L3 cache chips in their hands. 92 cores of Zen 4 being a massive chip. They're popping up over on the Goofish platform, which is gonna be for engineering samples and like gray market stuff. We've done a lot of shorts of like, 84 SSDs being jam packed into a scooter, tons of CPUs being smuggled in through a pregnant woman's belly. This is part of that market where there's a lot of incentive to sell them in China after getting them gray market from elsewhere. It's not quite clear if there's a buyer or if this is gonna be moving forward, but it does seem to suggest that Genoa X should be available at launch sometime soon officially from AMD. And unofficially, we're getting some reports of what the RTX 4060 Ti could cost. And I am just upset. I'm bothered by this because the price is gosh, Staying too high, I'll tell you that much. Reports are coming out that this card should come out sometime in May, potentially towards the end of it, around the Computex timeframe, which seems to align with Jensen being the keynote speaker over at Computex. But the report is right now that the price should be about $450, which is only a $50 price bump from the 3060 Ti, whereas the 4070 got a $100 price bump. But the only thing I want to caveat there, I totally forgot that Nvidia actually didn't technically increase the price of the 70 series card because I was watching an old episode of Hot News about the RTX 20 series launch and the RTX 2070 officially the MSRP of that was 599. However, it was only for the Founders Edition cards and the AIB partner models could technically sell for 499. So going back to 499 for the 3070 was an official price cut by Nvidia and now they're just going back to that same price. But obviously the 20 series was way too much money. I think $450 for the 46 Ti is too much for what you're gonna get for it. It's supposed to be faster than the 3070. That gives us faster than the 2080 Ti at $450, but only saves you $50 from what the 3070 used to cost. Now we are expecting that this is gonna be better on power consumption, but it's also supposed to have the same amount of VRAM as the RTX 3070, where there's been a lot of discussions that that card is insufficient for what it's trying to achieve with eight gigabytes. Additionally, it's also gonna be worse than the 3070. 60 and 3060 Ti in many ways because it's going to have fewer CUDA cores than the 3060 Ti. It's gonna have a smaller memory bus. It's gonna have less memory bandwidth. And considering many reviewers are coming out and saying that the 3070 with its faster memory bus and the same amount of VRAM is struggling against alternative AMD cards, having the same amount of VRAM and being slower is not gonna help its case. And then on top of that, you might notice that it has only a PCI Express Gen 4 by 8 interface. I talked about this in yesterday's episode of Hot News, but that is also a limitation that I think is unnecessary. That actually puts it more in line with what the RTX 3050 does in terms of memory bandwidth, 224 gigabytes per second, where you can see the 4060 Ti will come in at 288. So they're gonna be in the same class of card right there. Additionally, the 3050 was the only 30 series card that got it by a interface. You can see the 3060 had full 16 lanes. So Nvidia is cutting things down quite a bit and then charging us way more for them. This is a card that is technically on paper faster than the 3070, but limited in so many ways, even worse than the 4070 is because the 4070 at least had the advantage of getting more VRAM than the 3070 Ti. The 4060 Ti gets none of that. It's gonna have the exact same amount of VRAM as the 3060 Ti, but it's gonna be slower VRAM. And the only thing that's faster is it's gonna be a slightly overclocked, fewer CUDA core setup. And I guess in is just really hoping that DLSS 3 is enough to sell people on it. But based on the reception of the 4070, if this comes in anywhere near $400, I think it's way too much. I think this card needs to be in the 299 region in order for it to be justifiable because it's absolutely just a cut down version of everything we've seen so far beyond what I've seen with the 4070 and the 4080. I think this might actually be the most egregious one because this is targeting mainstream consumers and not targeting the people who have a ton of cash, but rather going for people who are gonna buy buying this in pre-built and then giving them limitations that they wouldn't have had otherwise, which I can't say that I'm shocked Nvidia would be doing at this point. Let me know what you think of the 4060 Ti down below in the comments and I'll let you know that I'll be back here for more hot news for you tomorrow, my friends.